Now let's talk about the coronary circulation. So we haven't really touched on this too, too much, but basically you would consider the coronary circulation as a grouping of blood vessels that provide blood directly to the heart muscle itself. So the heart is a pump that pumps blood all throughout the body, but let's not forget that it's made of cells that need to be fed with oxygen and other nutrients. And so there needs to be a mechanism to feed the heart muscle in order for the heart muscle to continuously work. And unlike some of the other structures of the body that may rest for periods of time, we must remember that the heart never rests, it always beats, it never stops unless, uh, unless you get to the point of, of actual death. So therefore, we have to ensure that there's always going to be adequate coronary circulation. So let's talk about it. In this drawing, we have our basic uh, layout of the heart and I've drawn in the aorta so that we can uh, just remember the aortic sinuses and understand where the coronary circulation originates. So uh, initially the blood is going to move, uh, move from the left ventricle and then it's going to travel into the aorta and that's going to be immediately after contraction. And then later on the blood's going to fill the coronary arteries and allow the blood to flow into the heart. So um, looking at the heart from the anterior perspective, we can see that from the aortic sinus on the left side of the heart, we have one coronary artery that's called the left coronary artery, or LCA. Abbreviations are totally appropriate in, in this case. Uh, the vessels are commonly referred to by their abbreviations. And the LCA is also called the left main. Now the LCA will branch into two other major coronary arteries, the circumflex and the left anterior descending. And on the opposite side, the other aortic sinus on the right side is going to give rise to the right coronary artery. And the right coronary artery really doesn't, um, it, it branches, but it doesn't branch into any other major arteries that we wanna consider at this point. And so we'll just sort of, um, we'll stop there. Now, before we move on and talk about the posterior view of the coronary arteries and coronary circulation, I wanna expand on the physiology of how these coronary arteries are fed. So what we're gonna do is just draw a blow up of the aorta with the aortic sinuses right and left. And let's just talk about specifically how the heart muscle is fed. So normally when the heart muscle contracts, um, we call that systole, the, the blood will be pumped out into the aorta and then subsequently to the rest of the body. And during that time, the semilunar valves will be pushed open and they'll actually block the sides of the aortic sinuses and so the flow of blood to the coronary arteries is not possible at this point because it's there's a physical obstruction in the way and the blood so the blood will kind of scoop past them and it will cause the aorta to stretch just because there's a high pressure volume of, of blood that's coming out so the aorta will stretch to receive the blood and then after that initial uh, contraction phase where the blood is coming out, the blood will pass that section of the aorta and the aorta will begin to recoil. Now as the aorta recoils, the semilunar valves will also close and remember that we want to make sure that the blood doesn't go back into the ventricle. And so the as the valves close, there is now a passageway, an opening, for the blood to actually make it into the coronary arteries. So the that the aortic sinuses are now accessible and the blood's gonna flow into the left and right coronary arteries. And so actually this is during heart relaxation or diastole. So we always say that the heart muscle is fed during diastole. And the last thing I wanna mention is what specific areas of the heart are fed by each of the coronary arteries that stem off of the aortic sinuses. So the left coronary artery feeds the left ventricle, the left atrium and the interventricular septum and the right coronary artery feeds the right atrium, parts of both ventricles, and the SA and AV nodes. As we have the opportunity to talk more about the physiology, we'll discuss why it's important that each area, area of the heart is fed and what happens when a particular area isn't fed by blood. And uh, we'll also discuss the impact on the SA and AV nodes when they're not getting adequate supply. All right, so now let's talk briefly about the posterior view of circulation. And there's actually another coronary artery that we haven't mentioned yet. So I wanna just kind of put this into perspective. So here's our anterior view and I'm gonna just uh, color code the different coronary arteries so you can keep track of them on the posterior aspect of the heart. So from the anterior view, we see LCA, circumflex, LAD, and then the RCA. And when we flip the heart around, we have to remember that the right, right and left sides are gonna be different. So we'll just label those. 
And there's actually a little bit of variety in terms of what this anatomy looks like. So 90% of the population, we have one version of the anatomy and in 10% of the population, we have the other version. So let's start by considering the 90% of the population. So from the posterior view, we can see that the circumflex wraps around and so does the right coronary artery. And then the right coronary artery will give rise to the posterior descending artery or PDA. And as we compare that to the 10% of the population, um, the circumflex and the right coronary artery both wrap around, but in this case, the circumflex will give rise to the posterior descending artery instead. So we still have the same, uh, the same arteries, but just you know, in terms of where the posterior descending artery stems from, gives us a little bit of a different understanding of the anatomy. And we'll talk more about the significance of this moving forward, but for now, I just wanna make sure that we can understand the differences. Now, when the right coronary artery gives rise to the posterior descending artery, we call that right dominant. So 90% of the population is right dominant. So for you know every 10 people, nine of them are gonna have this, this version of the anatomy. And then you know one of those 10 people will fall under the left dominant category, and left dominant means that the circumflex gives rise to the posterior descending artery. So one out of every 10 people is gonna have this anatomy. And the last thing I wanna mention at this point is what happens you know, once these coronary arteries disperse blood throughout the, the heart muscle. So arteries are gonna break down into capillaries. Capillaries will allow for exchange of oxygen, nutrients, and waste products. And then eventually the capillaries will collect into cardiac veins. And so the cardiac veins will bring the blood essentially you know, back to the right atrium of the heart. And they'll do so via the great cardiac vein. So they'll dump into the great cardiac vein. And then that ultimately is gonna empty into the coronary sinus. So now we've considered the flow of blood throughout the body as well as flow of blood around the heart muscle. And we can see, um, you know, just a little bit more about the circulation. And that's all for coronary circulation. Thanks for watching.